Hello everybody, welcome to today's webinar presented by Rogers Corporation with subject Performance Optimization of this Seeding System. My name is Dominic Pavlik and I will be your presenter. The presentation is divided in two parts. During both parts you will be muted to not disturb me and to not disturb other participants. In the first part I will be doing a presentation that will take approximately 30 to 40 minutes and the second part I will be answering your questions that you can always ask using a chat window on your screen. Maybe before we start, a few words about Rogers and myself. So as mentioned, my name is Dominic, I'm a product innovation manager. I have more than 15 years experience in the sales, product management, business development in electrical industrial markets. I have a title of Master of Electrical Engineering from Silesian University in Poland and today I work for Rogers Corporation. So, let's start. Maybe some of you know already Rogers, some of you maybe not. So very briefly about Rogers. Rogers is a global leader in engineered materials, helping power, protect, connect our world by addressing the challenges of growing megatrends. The company is a stock listed and it was founded in 1832. So as you can see, it's as more than 180 years of operation, it's one of the oldest company in US. Rogers has a long history of material innovation and over the past two decades has expanded worldwide to serve global markets. If you look at the size, company in 2015 has made a sales of 641 million. But if you are interested in more details about the performance of a company, you can since it is a stock listed, you can go and you can see at the annual reports presented on our webpage. In size, uh, today company has approximately 2,800 employees around the globe with a manufacturing on three continents and a headquarter in Rogers, Connecticut. It has as well, as you can see, 21 different manufacturing facilities. Within Rogers, there are three core strategic business segments. The first one, Advanced Connectivity Solution, ACS, formerly named Advanced Circuit Materials, manufacturing high-frequency laminates and prepacks. The second, Elastomeric Material Solution, EMS, known or formerly named was high-performance foams, manufacturing silicon foams, fabrics, films and foams, and maybe some of you have heard about the names like Arlon, Bisco or Poron. And the third one, where I have an opportunity to work, it's called Power Electronic Solutions, PES, with two brands, Rollings for bus bars and capacitor bus bar assemblies that we will talk today, and Ceramic for substrates and coolers. All three business units share focus on a mission-critical application, of course, where reliability is a critical to product performance. In many cases, the products prevent injury or loss of life. Rogers is also a technology leader and has a collaborative model working closely with customers to bring next generation products. Overall, each business unit focus on unique engineered material solutions. That was all about the Rogers Corporation. Let's focus now on the subject for today's webinar, performance optimization of this unique system. Of course, if someone is interested into more details about product that I mentioned earlier, you're welcome to contact me after this webinar or you're welcome to visit our webpage where you will find the information. So let's start. I think the first thing is, is to define not the problem but the challenge. And if we follow the trends in the power electronics, both in automotive or industrial applications, you see that all the products need to meet very challenging requirements. This is related not only to inverters where we use the DC link systems, but also to all kinds of the converters in the different applications. I think one of the major challenging requirements is reliability. We always hear about this, this subject, reliability, and on the other side we hear about increasing the power density, making a product much more performance, trying to keep it in the same size or reduce the size. So this kind of a challenge like the reliability, power density, performance or better efficiency are definitely challenging for building inv inverters. On the other side, we hear about the 
cost effectiveness or meeting the target of a cost. And here I think we are looking continuously for improvements of cost. Key technologies like uh, fast switching semiconductors are already successfully used in the market today. However, as we said, since electronic components and its characteristics becoming much more complex, design solutions have to be found not only at component level, but rather at the system level, especially if we talk about the interactions between passive components, like for example, bus bars and active components like a deceiving capacitors. Talking about the capacitors, this is important during the semiconductor switching, where the DC link actually is a part of a commutation loop and definitely it has an impact on behavior and efficiency of application. Going into more details about DC link systems from a technical point, one of the key parameters is the temperature. As we know, components inside the inverter must be kept within material limitations to ensure good reliability. If we take, for example, capacitors is an important parameter for lifetime predictions and definition of a maximum current. As the temperature depends on internal resistance, for capacitors we, we use the term of ESR, equivalent series resistance, and the ripple current, the heat that is produced by the losses should be removed from the capacitors as efficient as possible. That is why the thermal resistance of a capacitor is an important factor, characteristic. On the other side, if we look at the cooling of the inverter, it is not only driven by semiconductor switching devices or GBTs, but it is as well driven by the DC link capacitors. And here the selection of the right capacitor on his construction is so important. On the third parameter, it's a strategy that we will take regarding the temperature management. That, of course, that has an impact on reliability of our current density in inverter. So, in designers has actually different possibilities in selection. They can use it, for example, coolant temperature, coolant efficiency, sizing of the components or oversizing of the components in order to meet the requirements of a temperature or decreasing the current in the inverter. So these are all the parameters that has an impact but an overall goal we wanted to have is to reduce the temperature or keep it in the limits material for each component and as well or a complete system. The next important parameter in a dc system is inductance. Overall goal is to keep the lowest possible keeping it low reduce the voltage overshoot during turnoff. As we know, voltage overshoot occurs during IGBT turnoff due to energy stored in a strain inductance applied across the die. It is typically to operate at the DC voltage that is below the IGBT limits in order to avoid the failure or reduce the inverter power. Therefore, there are the techniques to reduce overshoot to certain degrees, for example, by adding additional snubber capacitor. But this approach, of course, adds additional costs, sometimes requires additional cooling, increase the number of components that reduce reliability, and it may have as well the potential for creating unwanted resonance. So, of course, the overshoot management must be addressed at the system level to minimize the strain inductance. And this is looking at a capacitor or a bus bar combination capacitor bar bus bar assembly. This will be a first step in increasing the amount of usable power out of the IGBT that we use. If we look at the inductance contributors in a DC link system, this will be definitely DC link capacitor, bus bar structures, and internal IGBT. On the previous slides, we have defined requirements, or we call it the challenging requirements, looking at the temperature and inductance. Let's have a look now at the possible solutions. Since recent advances in a capacitor form factor and terminal optimi optimization 
or bus bar optimizations are giving now technologies or topologies including capacity or bus bars that can achieve very low inductance and resistance. Rogers offers an assembly that is a kind of a combination of SBE power ring film capacitors integrated with a rolling bus bar structure. And this can achieve a very low, as an example, DC link inductance below 10 nanohenries, going even down to 5 nanohenries. But of course, that depends on the bus bus structures and use capacitor, but these configurations are possible. So what you see on this slide are there two pictures of integrated capacitor bus bar assemblies. On the left side, you have a bus bar that's a white structure, and you have a two capacitors, the black one type of a hockey puck installed on the top and on the bottom. We will go through the next slides and the details regarding this film capacitors will be discussed as they have some very specific features that helps actually reducing both interesting for us parameters. These capacitors for information are designed and manufactured by company SBE. In addition to all this, this technology provides the highest possible current rating per millifarad. We mentioned earlier that there are the topologies capable to reduce both resistance and inductance of the dc link system. On this slide you have an example of this type of a construction that consisting two elements. One is a bus bar structure, typically it is a laminated bus bar, and as a second component these are the thin capacitors. If we look into the details about the laminated bus bars, usually it is a multi-layer construction that consists two conductors and they are separated by insulation layer. These conductors are made out of a copper or aluminium. Aluminium is used usually when we talk about very heavy bus bar and we wanted to reduce the weight. Sometimes it is used as well aluminium to reduce the cost of the whole system and these two conductors are protected against the oxidation by being plated in tin or a nickel and of course there is an insulation layer between the conductors and usually it is used polyester dielectric film. The second component in this combination or construction is a film capacitor with a specific, in this example, annual form factor that provides the best performance. It is capacitors that is using a standard film. It is a metallized zinc construction film capacitor where a zinc is a vacuum deposit on the film. And as I mentioned, it, they have a very specific form factor that actually gives a lot of advantages and can reduce it. So let's go to the next slide where actually we will go through the details of each component. First we start with capacitor. So what is so special about these capacitors? We talk about importance on the temperature of a lifetime. If we look at this slide we have a very nice explanation how can we actually reduce internal resistance or resistance losses in a capacitor. On the left side you have a typical CAN capacitor and we knew that the current is flowing between electrodes from the top to the bottom. That generates a resistive loss inside the capacitor. If you would like to reduce resistance or equivalent series resistance because we talk about the capacitors. Let's take this capacitor and cut it into the half. What will happen? We will actually reduce the distance between the electrodes. By this way we actually reduce the ESR by two times. What if we will take this capacitor to the next level? We will compress it into the platter solution 
type of a hockey puck what I mentioned earlier. We will drastically reduce the distance between the electrodes and we will reduce ESR by approximately 10 times. So exactly these capacitors that are offered on, on our bus bars as a integrated solutions, these are this type of capacitors with this annual form factor very flat and they have not only the short distance between electrodes but they have as well a big surface for the heat dissipation. So let's go to the next slide when we will review the other performance of these capacitors. In this example we compare configuration of 4 times 250 microfarad film can capacitors with one power rig capacitors of rating 1 millifarad. As you can see at certain rating of current rating we have a much higher internal heat approximately 90 degrees per each can capacitors where power ring as a stable temperature around 56 degrees across its construction. So this is advantage due to the fact that we have a much lower ESR internal resistance but as well due to much lower thermal resistance. So the shorter distance between the electrodes. So thermal lowest thermal barrier to the ambient and we can allow it actually to to go at a certain temperature rise have much more higher current compared to traditional solution. On this graph we show a very low temperature rise in renewable inverter application while we compare traditional capacitor with power ring. Both capacitors are using the same polypropylene film but overall we can say it's a poor thermal conductor that limits actually the current rating. So if we take these two capacitors and we look at the same temperature rise approximately 20 degrees you can see that with a power ring we can achieve three times more current compared to traditional design so this is a big advantage compared to the standard CAN capacitors. Let's move now to the other parameter that we can optimize in a decining system, that is inductance. In the next few slides we will discuss the details, how we can reduce it. And there are overall three ways to do it. First, by optimizing terminal configuration for capacitors to reduce magnetic field loop. This is really related to the way how the capacitor is connected to the bus bar structure. In these examples we use here a specific crown construction. The second method to reduce the DC link inductance is by integrating capacitor directly on the bus bar structure as a surface mount devices. This we have already seen in some pictures on the previous slides. And the third method is by improving connection geometry from bus bars to IGBTs directly. Using some simple tricks we can reduce inductance at connection point between model and bus bar. So let's move forward. On this slide we have an example with a test kit of 3000 microfarad and 1100 volt and everything starts actually with a discrete capacitor on the left side where this capacitor sometimes we call it as well as standard on construction has its own terminals for low inductance but what if we will go to a step and we will remove the bottom terminals and we will actually connect it directly to the bus bar. We will reduce the copper as well the path length and the same way we reduce the inductance. So actually the bus bar will become the terminal. This is what we see in the middle 
of a slide. On the right side you see as well the input terminals for the connection and on the left side you have as well optimized through-hole connections to the half bridge. In addition what you see on this slide as well is that we have a bus bar in the middle and actually we have a two capacitors. We have one mounted on the top and the second mounted from the bottom. This configuration is only possible when we put and we will integrate the bus bar or we integrate capacitor directly on the bus bars. With the traditional CAN capacitors, due to the fact that they have these large terminals, it would be not possible. So this is the way by integrating capacitor on the bus bars we can reduce the inductance. On the next slide we will go the step where we can actually reduce it the inductance directly at the terminals that are connected to IGBTs. In this example we've been using simulation program to verify where the highest concentration of inductance, inductance is in DC leak system in combination of a bus bar and capacitors. So what you see actually here on the left side is a picture of bus bar integrated with the two capacitors at the bottom. On the top this is what you don't see actually but normally there is a space where we can connect our IGBT models. You see at terminals where actually the IGBTs are connected. On the right side the picture you see the same model run through the simulation program and you see marked in a dark blue the highest concentration of inductance and it is actually exactly at the connection point at the terminals. So we've been trying to verify how can we reduce it and the access has given uh, the possibilities since the bus bar is using a bushing to adapt this to the correct level of the terminals, we, if we reduce this bushing, making a smaller height, then we can reduce as well the inductance. So at the same time, the overall inductance in these DC link systems will be reduced. Next to reducing inductance and resistance, what we have seen on the previous slides, with a, this type of a DC link system, this topology, we can reduce as well the size of a complete bank. What you see here is a traditional configuration using a bus bar structure with 10 capacitors. In this example, these are the electronic capacitors, film capacitors. And on the right side, you see an evolution using this new technology where we have a bus bar structured with four ring capacitors, two on the top, two at the bottom. Both banks has the same nominal voltage, talk about 1100 volt nominal. The right solution has a little bit less capacitance because the buffer was not required. However, it was increased in a current we go from 300 amp up to 450 amp at the same temperature. So, and the same is for the inductance. Each single capacitor from electronic has approximately 40 nano Henry. Of course, putting in a parallel, then the inductance overall inductance will be reduced. And when we compare it with a solution on the right side, the estimated complete DC link inductance is around 25 nano Henry. The same is for ESR. It's estimated at 0.4 milli ohm. So you can see that this way as well it is a possible to limit number of capacitors, improving parameters that we mentioned. It. And at the bottom you have a real picture. This is a compact alternative solution for one of the Danfoss uh, inverter when on left side you have a bus bar structure the white one and maybe you don't see it very well but there are as well the black capacitors 
on the right side you have uh, evolution much smaller bus bars with a capacitors from the top and the bottom everything what we said before were the guidelines how you can optimize the DCing system in order to validate Rogers provides an integrated cap bus assemblies that you as and customers can easily evaluate with a standard models from companies like Infineon, Semicron, Fuji, Hitachi or Danfoss and this you can validate in terms of a performance with some minimum investment as well you can customize to your requirements. Uh, recently also a new test kit for Infineon hybrid pack drive was added to, to portfolio available for testing and if we talk about this Infineon hybrid pack drive and I think that represents the state-of-the-art IGBT specifically for the automotive market and I think it's an approximately 30% reduction relative to the previous model that Infineon uh, or still offering is an uh, Infineon Hybrid Pack 2. So there are the two optimized dc link capacitor bus bar test kits available designed specifically uh, they are matching the size reduction one is a horizontal layout and you will see it on the next slide where place the DC link capacitors in line with IGBT and there's a vertical layout that locates the capacitors under the neath of IGBT cooling plate to create their compact design and this Infineon HP driver requirements were to have a DC link ca a capacitor capable of voltage between 450 up to 550 volt DC the ripple current between 75 amp up to 125 amp the capacitance there are two capacitance available 450 as well as 500 microfarad with a lifetime of 10,000 hours and it, it's are typically I would say for automotive drive so in the next two slides I just wanted to give you a little bit of overview of these two kits from uh, available for Infineon hybrid pack. What do you see in front of you now? It's the horizontal configuration of a DC link and this configuration has two 250 microfarad film capacitors windings that are directly integrated on a bus bar structure and they have a common crown terminal. Well you you don't see the directive the capacitors because the complete set is actually encapsulated but you can imagine that from the bottom there are these two capacitors. What you can see as well that the DC input terminals to the cap, cap bus are the on opposite side of IGBT connection and this provides actually the best utilization of the capacitors and minimize the current hogging. This configuration as well has the shortest possible connection length from the capacitors to IGBT inputs and combined with a through hole what we mentioned earlier actually gives us the lowest possible ESL so inductance and this test kit was tested internally as well as by the independent uh, laboratory ORNL and even at the Infineon and the measurements given in the results of this testing were showing that ESL is around 8 nano Henry at the terminals. What you see now is a vertical configuration that is using exactly the same two capacitors. You actually can see them at the bottom. There is as well a crown that attached with two capacitors to the bus bar. The bus bar however has a different structure. You see as well in the middle that we have a cooling plate and this cooling plate removes the heat from the bottom 
So remove the heat from capacitors and from the top side normally there are the IGPTs, you don't see them here but they remove the heat of the cooling plate removes the heat as well from these IGPTs. The terminal connections to IGPTs has been maintained however due to the fact that now the structure of the bus bar is different and there is a longer path the ESL has been increased and based on the measurements we've seen that inductance now is around 12 nanohenry. However the biggest advantage of this configuration is that this is a very compact design and while the ESL of this design is a bit higher than horizontal layout the current rating is significantly increased since the bus and IGBT losses do not flow through the capacitor. We can allow to actually much higher ambient temperature. If you would like to know more about the details of this configuration or of the previous one, we have a specific application note that describes the method of the measurements and testing and I would be glad to, to send it to you. This is one of the last slides for today's webinar giving you indication what kind of a standard products are available. If in terms of voltage we talk about desilling systems from 450 volt up to 1800 but I don't want it to limit it because there are as well the applications we've been delivering and have much higher voltage going up to 2500 volt. In terms of capacitance it's up to 1.6 millifarad so we talk about relative peak capacitors as well in terms of a range for current it's up to 500 amp but can go as well higher. If you look at the typical applications due to the fact that we talk about relative high power it will be definitely systems where it can be used wind inverters, solar inverters but as well all inverters used in automotive markets. You have as well some pictures of a typical designs what you've seen it already on the previous slides but of course depending on your requirements this standard test kits can be changed to the real prototypes or real uh, models in your specific application. So let's make a summary of our discussion today regarding optimization of a DC link system. What we discuss it is how to reduce the inductance and the resistance and if you remember we talk about changing from the CAN capacitors to the annual form factor capacitors this are allowing us to reduce drastically the ESR by having a large surface on the capacitors it's enabling us more efficiently to remove the heat from the capacitors to the ambient. This way we increase the current rating in capacitors and of course altogether that improves our reliability. If we take these capacitors and we integrate into the bus bar structure we reduce the inductance as a configuration there are available different models that you can purchase from Rogers and you can perform the validation tests and Rogers is willing to work with your engineers for your specific applications 
to provide the solution to optimize uh, your inverter designs. So I would like to thank you very much for participating in this webinar and one more time if you have any questions there will be a time right now to ask or you can send me the email today or later this week if you require some more information. Thank you very much.